This is the examination of the hidden human condition. You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. When we're trying to understand someone's mind, the mind of a killer, the mind of a narcissist, the mind of a sociopath, wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to talk and have a conversation with another sociopath about a dangerous sociopath, one who may have committed horrible crimes or is committed or is accused of committing those horrible crimes. It's exactly what we have for you right now. She's been a guest on the show previously. She's back for this segment. M.E. Thomas is with us, author of the book Confessions of a Sociopath, a life spent hiding in plain sight. She is a diagnosed sociopath who understands the ins and the outs of being a sociopath. I want to talk about Rex Hurman with you today, Emmy. The question that so many people have is how did this individual manage, if it is in fact him, to live the life that he did, going from being this architect, a family man by many accounts, to the allegations against him of at night or when the wife was away, carrying out these heinous sort of crimes. What kind of of thinking does it take to be able to execute something like that? Can you give us that from your unique perspective? So I think he has a high ability to compartmentalize and it's probably comes from lack of integration of a concept of self, like his identity. Like I would probably guess sometimes people suggest, you know, Hey, this person's a psychopath or sociopath or because they do bad things. And I think, you know, it's a personality disorder. So do they have a personality disorder or don't they? And so you would Mm -hmm. look for some of these, you know, lack of integration of the personality. They don't have a good sense of self. That's the sort of thing that I would look for. And actually for Lisk, I do. What is his name again? Hureman? Yeah, Rex Hureman. Yeah. Yeah. So in the case of Hureman, I think that he probably does have a personality disorder, whatever one it is, narcissistic personality disorder or antisocial personality disorder. Mm-hmm. Because in order to have that high degree of compartmentalization where he doesn't seem to be conflicted at all, he doesn't seem to, you know, I just was reading a little bit about the baby killer from the UK, the nurse, mm-hmm. and she had like multiple diary entries in which she was saying, you know, I'm evil, I'm this yeah. bad thing. So you can see that she's conflicted about the things that she's doing, mm-hmm. whereas Hureman doesn't seem to be conflicted. He seems to be okay having one life that looks one way and then another life that looks an entirely different way. And that there, it's almost as if he doesn't experience it as a conflict. So that's what makes me think that he probably does have a personality disorder. Mm-hmm. And because he has a personality wow. disorder, he is capable of that degree of compartmentalization that People, honestly, without a personality disorder, probably aren't capable of it. He didn't necessarily, it seems, view it as a conflict personally, in his own mind. At the same point, do, did some would someone like him ever see that others are going to notice this as being a conflict? Should they ever be caught? Is, does that sort of thing ever go through one's mind Who who has this sort of a disorder that at some point this may catch up to me or do they truly confidently view that there's nothing that's going to stop me or does it not even does it not even really run through the mind of being caught it probably depends on which personality disorder the person had you know if they were you know obsessive compulsive personality disorder they probably would feel anxiety about you know getting caught if they were narcissistic personality disorder maybe they wouldn't maybe they would have this grandiose view of themselves as being smarter than the cops I think the interesting thing here, though, with Hureman is he doesn't seem to be concerned about being found out, except to the extent that it would hamper his ability to do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. So it seems to be very sort of Machiavellian in which he's kind of he he, everybody's on a need to know basis Mm -hmm. and they basically don't need to know anything And, you know, I've experienced that my own self as a psychopath, where I just don't want people knowing the personal details of my life. And it's because it's it just hampers me, you know, like now they're going to keep asking me about these things and I'm going to have to keep my lies straight and whatever else. And I think that he does probably get off on control. There are multiple things that 
to me suggests that he, you know, that is a primary motivation for the things that he does, including going after very small victims. And he stalks the family afterwards. You know, he seems to think that that in doing these horrible things that he's kind of manifesting, you know, his power and his authority in the world. That's probably my guess at why he is motivated to do these types of things. So that does kind of suggest to me maybe a narcissism, narcissistic personality disorder. And so maybe, you know, I tend to think that narcissists are some of the least in reality, I guess, of all the personality disorders. Their views, internal views tend to not track, you know, what's actual reality. And so, yeah, they're delusional, I guess, is the proper term for it. Sure. And he does come across as being a little delusional. I guess he also would look up his own self. He would like Google Lisk and see what they knew. And it kind of reminds me, I think it's a Ted Bundy quote where he says, you know, after a certain point, you just don't remember like where you hid the knife or whatever. Mm -hmm. You just kind of start getting sloppy because there's just so many instances in which you've done it. And I think being, you know, having done that many murders, uh, successfully, you know, so to speak, in his mind, would probably give him extra confidence. And with that confidence, that cockiness, he probably, you know, didn't worry that much about getting caught enough to kind of, you know, Google himself and try to, you know, avoid here and there. But I was really surprised to find out that he drove his own car to meet up with his victims. And that was ultimately a big piece of evidence that led to discovering his identity. Sure. You know, that that seems like the sort of chutzpah that even I wouldn't have, you know, as a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> like, I kind of can't imagine doing something so brazen mm -hmm. when you're planning on doing something that carries such a high degree of, you know, penalty. And it's, you know... I guess, you know, petty theft or whatever, they're not devoting a lot of police resources to solving those sorts of things. But murder, yes, you know, so you're basically asking for a team, a task force, the FBI probably to be involved with this. And it just seems really, you know, like kind of foolhardy to to be using your own car to be doing these sorts of things. So he's interesting because he takes a lot of precautions, but there's nothing about kind of the precautions that he takes that suggests that he himself is morally or emotionally in conflict. I think he's just trying to, you know, be as smart as possible. And maybe it's the architect in him, you know, I don't really know. This is speculation, but I would imagine that he is used to from his profession dealing with the law, you mm -hmm. know, and trying to understand like building codes and also dealing with government employees. So I think that probably did kind of help him understand a little bit what the police response might be to his crimes. And that probably helped him elude discovery for as long as he did. But again, I think all of these things were done just as a practical matter. And there was there was not a, an emotional conflict that I can see that he seemed to experience about the things that he did. You'd mentioned difficulty maybe keeping the lies straight when people ask about things. Can you expound upon that a little bit? I mean, is it more of a superpower for individuals like this where it's, I guess, easier or there's more control, more ability to shuffle through lies and make them appear as fact for someone like this versus the average individual who may not have that sort of a disorder? Yeah. So yeah, there, there's kind of two two parts about that. There's, I guess, yeah, the superpower being able to compartmentalize it. And why still though, despite my ability to compartmentalize, am I reluctant to share private information? And let's actually start with the second one because I, I have a story about this. I have okay. a friend who has a, you know, he's older, he has a baseball card collection. And once he told me, you know, that it was worth like quite a bit of money. And I was like, okay, but you have it in a totally unsafe place. You know, <laughs> like sure. somebody could easily come take these and maybe you should get a safety deposit box. And, you know, he's like, oh, don't worry about it. I'm going to sell these cards. But he hasn't. Right. Mm -hmm. But and I can kind of tell he doesn't want me to talk to him about it. You know, he probably regrets telling me about it because he, for whatever reason, doesn't want to do the thing about them, doesn't want to get a safety deposit box, doesn't want to actually sell them. But now that I know, you know, it's almost like he feels like I'm kind of watching him about it and feels like he has to kind of lie to me <laughs> you okay, know, about yeah. it as if I'm kind of judging him, you know, and he 
to my knowledge, does not have a personality disorder. But that would be the reason why I don't want people involved is because you really do have to then manage, you know, okay, they know this X fact about me, you know, that I have this baseball card collection or whatever else it is. And now I just need to always make sure in my mind that to remember that this is something that they know about me. And so everything else has to be consistent with that, you know, whatever it is that what, you know, personal information, whatever personal information that they happen to know about me. So that kind of makes it complicated. The reason why it makes it complicated in a way, though, is to getting back to this first point, which is, you know, when you have a personality disorder, it essentially means that there's, you're not internally all integrated, right? That's the kind of thing that you're suffering from mm. is that you don't have this sense of self. You don't have like a normal personality. It's somehow been damaged or it was malformed from the beginning. You know, it never developed the way it was supposed to. And with that though, comes this ability to kind of be a chameleon because since it's, it's not like this strong anchored, you know, ballast in your ship of personality disorder, it's you're able to kind of like slip slide around with it. You know, you're not like a tree that's rooted, but you're more like something with wheels on it, actually, you know, and you can kind of you can move. You can be a lot of different things because you're not dealing with a firm internal core set of identity or values. So I think that's why the compartmentalization is easy. In fact, it will happen even without you intending to do it. You know, I have a girlfriend who's also psychopathic. And I went through therapy before she did. <laughs> and so I experienced her, you know, largely as kind of this very capable of compartmentalizing thing. And she'd say, you know, completely opposite stuff from day to day. You know, one day maybe she'd be like, you know, I love beer. The next day I hate beer. You know, I love X person. I hate X person. And it wasn't as if she was changing her mind. It was almost like she was just looking like a prism. Like the light's just hitting the prism a slightly different way. And so now it's shining out as like blue, whereas if you just adjust the angle slightly, it's shining out as red. You know, like the things that would kind of trigger different reactions in her, it wasn't as if she was kind of purposefully doing it. It was just that day she just was a different person. She really yeah. was. That's how she experienced the world in that moment. So I think with somebody like Hureman, if you are kind of not really rooted in a sense of self or an identity, you know, your personal characteristics or personal values, I would imagine that it would be a lot like that where, you know, you're a family man. Sure. And while you're the family man, you're perfectly happy perhaps to be the family man, but you know, on a different day, you're just a different person. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the hidden killers podcast with Tony Bruschi.